Yo, what's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's your boy No Name back at it with another recap of the training camp practice day number 11. At least I think it's day 11, kind of lost count a little bit. But today was a nice, even practice. A lot of players made some good plays, got a couple of standouts here. It was really a nice, even playing field today. Oh, some good news first of all. First off, yesterday we saw that unfortunately DeAndre Baker had to leave practice early, which gave Corey Ballantyne a chance to step in, and he did the most with his opportunity. But today, Baker was spotted on the sideline, standing up too, so it looks like all's good. Uh, I think his x ray came back negative for whatever it was, it was probably just a strain on his leg or something. But it's looking all good. DeAndre Baker looks healthy. He looks fine. Uh, the most I think he'll be out. I think they did say it was a strain, a sprain on his ankle or something. Hopefully he's not out too long. I'll say the same thing for him as I said with all the other injuries. If he needs to miss a couple of games, let him miss a couple of games. I'd rather have a player miss some games and come back healthy and strong than them rushing back or coming back early and then risking a re-injury which would take away a lot more playing time and a, probably some time off of their career too. So it was good to see Baker back. Sticking with the cornerbacks, one of the standouts today was Janoris Jenkins, a name that we haven't heard in a long time among standouts for New York Giants. And when it's among corners, similar to Baker because of just Baker's playing style in college and even in the preseason game and in practices, we don't hear his name a lot. And that's good for cornerbacks because it means you're quietly doing your job. You know, you're not getting a lot of blown coverages on your way. You're not getting burnt by any receivers. You're not giving up a lot of touchdowns or big catches. It means you're probably doing a good job on whoever you're covering. And today Jenkins finally got his name called for like the first time and probably since we last played football against the Cowboys or something. But it was nice to see Jenkins back at it again. And today he did his work in the goal line drills. He had two batted passes on Eli. One of them was to Rod Smith. And another was to Evan Ingram. And like I said, since it was goal line formation, goal line drills, he basically prevented two touchdowns. It's nice to hear his name call back. Another reason is because, as I mentioned in I think one of my OTA videos, in an interview, Jenkins has kind of revealed that he, since he's the oldest and most experienced person in the cornerback room, specifically cornerback room, not safety room, because I think that would go to Antoine Bethea, but since he's that guy in the cornerback room, he's now stepped into a leadership role where he has to teach these young guys that we have, and really, other than him, everybody else is either second year player or, or a rookie. Like, um, the next guys up, DeAndre Baker, Julian Love, Corey Ballantyne, Grant Haley, Sam Beal, if he comes back healthy, is a very, very young cornerback group. And Jenkins is the one that's leading them, whether it's by example, like he did today, or whether it's by giving them advice, helping them in the film room and whatnot, which I'm sure is what he's been doing off the field. In addition to those batted passes, when he was on Cody Latimer, who has seemed to uh, stay healthy thus far in the offseason, we hope that he could keep that up. And he's been putting in the work too, we saw it in the preseason game. And when you look at the practices, you can tell this guy is really fighting for that third wide receiver spot. Maybe he wants to move up, who knows. But Jenkins was in tight coverage with him and forced an incompletion over his head. Which is no easy feat to do on any wide receiver really. But to do it on what is now our third or fourth best wide receiver is something that's expected of Jenkins as our best cornerback. Another cornerback that showed off their skill today was Grant Haley, our undrafted rookie from last year that is now entering his sophomore year. Uh, this is somebody that a lot of people underestimate, including a couple Giants fans who think that Julian Love should have the starting nod over him. Today, Haley once again showed off his skill and showed why he should be the starting uh, cornerback, slot corner, nickel corner. After he finally got his yellow jersey off, that yellow jersey that indicated he was not allowed to be tackled because of uh, injury risk. He finally got it off, knocked away a pass from Sterling Shepard, or a pass to Sterling Shepard, and had pressure on Eli, would have probably gotten a sack on what was a cornerback blitz play. Just kind of quickly touching upon that Grant Haley, Junior Love uh, corner spot battle right there. Um, I, I, I'm gonna trust the coaches on this one because Love 
according to all reports, has been seen to really take a liking to that um, free safety role. He seems to be developing quite well in it, learning fast and even performing better in that than the slot corner role. Now, I'm not predicting anything or saying where he should be at, but I'm just going to trust the coach's judgment on it because Grant Haley is a good slot corner with a lot of room for improvement and a lot of potential. He's just entering his second year. And the same goes for Junior Love with the free safety position. It's not the first time a, a player from college level has come into the NFL and switched up positions. I mean, although we already have somebody else like that on our team in Jabril Peppers. He was a linebacker in college. He converted to safety and he uh, is probably, a, in my opinion, top 20 safety in the league and definitely has potential to go higher. Another person that had good pressure today, keeping up with that pass rush theme a little bit, was Marcus Golden. Somebody whose name I had expected to hear a lot more of over the offseason and even in that preseason game against the Jets where he had an okay outing, but um, I guess I expect a little bit more from him. Marcus Golden had a good game today, or a good practice today. He would have had two sacks if they were allowed to finish the tackling and sacking on Eli. Obviously breaking through that first team offensive line, the new revamped and new and improved one, which did perform well on that Thursday preseason game. And they will be tested. Oh man, will they be tested this Friday against the Bears? But Marcus Golden finally get his name called. I want to see him improve. Uh, he was a very low risk, high reward sign type of player. It's not like we give him a bunch of money or anything. So if he doesn't pan out, he doesn't pan out. But I hope he does for both the Giants' sake and his sake. It will be a nice comeback story. He was, in fact, the Arizona Cardinals one of their sack leaders two, three years ago. So he has the potential to do so. Now, I've mentioned Eli a couple times already with the defense getting the best of him. Uh, yesterday, he had his best practice in years. Today, he had a good practice, but it was definitely a little bit of a drop-off. I mean, it's not like I expected him to continue that amazing streak or anything. But he was very good uh, in all the drills except for that red zone drill, the goal line drill, where the first team offense really failed to get into the end zone on all six of their tries. I mentioned the two bad away passes from Jenkins. In addition to that, there was one of uh, Marcus's, Marcus Golden's two sacks on Eli came during that red zone period. He threw a ball to Barkley, unfortunately, Saquon dropped it. That's definitely not something we see every day. And then Saquon also got stuffed um, in the run. Now, this is something that they have to improve on before the regular season comes around. They definitely still have time. There's a good couple of, um, not OTs, there's still a couple of training camp practices left for them to work out the kinks and whatnot. Still got three preseason games left. But I don't want this to become a problem again, because this was a problem for the Giants. Uh two seasons ago the 2017 season and maybe you could say the first couple of games in the 2018 season we had a lot of trouble getting into the end zone for some reason that's when the offense was moving and we'd get into the uh red zone but we couldn't close it out that's really been a problem for like a good two three years now i hope that it does not come back because it kind of disappeared for like those last four games of the season those last eight games kind of disappeared when we were finally putting up points just don't want it to come back you know and why Eli had a good but not great day today, uh, Daniel Jones, that dude right there from Duke, he had another great practice today. He's, in general, he's been great in the offseason all over the place. He's been great in OTAs, spring training, rookie mini camp, and preseason, and he's been great in training camp. All of this builds to me saying, I love it, I just hope it translates to the regular season. You know, it's a different, it's a different animal, it's a different beast in the regular season. But Jones today, really good had three straight touchdown passes in the second team's turn to uh practice within the red zone drills the um the goal line drills one was a fade to tj jones who really showed out in that preseason game definitely showed me some potential and we need it because amba Etawa was unfortunately seen limping off of practice field today hopefully everything's good with him so tj jones you know he's somebody we need to step up Another receiver that caught a touchdown pass from Jones was Russell Shepard, and then he had one to the undrafted tight end, Garrett Dickerson. It's nice to see all these uh, receivers, um, and I'm counting Garrett Dickerson as a receiver because, you know, he's a tight end, but who knows? Maybe he could be signed on to the team as a receiver. Lord knows we need him with all the injury injuries going around. Seems we caught the injury bug again. But it's nice to see these guys stepping up. Nice to see that Jones is building chemistry with them. Because he did catch a break early in practice. He could have had an interception. Nate Stupar jumped on the ball, but dropped it. So, that's what I got for you all today. You know, not much going on. 
Uh, like I said, very balanced practice. Definitely great play from the cornerbacks. It seems that our pass rush is slowly but surely improving. And the quarterbacks had a good day today. Despite the fact that um, it wasn't perfect in the red zone for the first team, I believe they could have time to work it out and that they will work it out. And Jones uh, continues to show us his potential and continues to show us that he's a viable quarterback for this league. So that's what I got for you all today. Comment but down below what you think. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out. Your hi guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Your